Greetings, dabblings, and welcome to a new series for the channel where we're going to be leading our people to seek their fortunes on the farthest frontier. And while we're there, maybe we'll be able to find the answer to the ever-burning question, is this a better banished? Farthest Frontier, for those who aren't in the know, is a new colony builder with a strong focus on survival, be it in the form of making sure you have enough food and firewood to survive a grueling winter, or turning back raids and invasions from greedy nobles. There are obvious parallels to be drawn between this game and the likes of Anno, or indeed Banished, so fans of those games will likely feel quite at home with some of the concepts in this one. But Father's Frontier hasn't been dragging its feet when it comes to new mechanics, and boasts one of the, if not the, most involved farming system I've encountered outside of literal farming sims. And on top of all that, it wraps everything up in some gorgeous graphics for good measure. So, I hope you're looking forward to our dive into the game, and if by the end of the episode you decide you enjoyed what you saw and you want to see more, do be sure to let me know down below with a like or a comment. But with that said, let's get things started, and the first thing we'll need to decide is how difficult of a time do we want to give ourselves? Now, there are three over overall kind of complete package difficulties if you like pioneer trailblazer and vanquisher and the differences between them are split over four main areas starting resources how prevalent hunting and wildlife are in the region hostile forces and also healthcare adversity so how often people will get sick what kinds of ailments they'll get that sort of thing now, for our first run, we're going to be rolling with Trailblazer, going to go middle of the line across everything. So we'll have the default amount of star resources, hunting and wildlife in the area, hostile forces and healthcare. Uh, however, you can go all the way up to Vanquisher, which is going to really gimp the things that are going to help you and buff the things that will work against you. And you can also, if you would like, go a little bit deeper, drill down even deeper still. And then over the four main areas which the difficulty is going to affect, you can set those differently so for example if you found the raiders particularly difficult you could just drop them down a difficulty and if you found uh, that wildlife made the game too easy you could bump that up to vanquish a difficulty to restrict it even further we're going to be playing on a large map in terms of the terrain you've got the lowland lakes which is the easiest of them all you've got plains which is kind of moderate difficulty alpine valleys also moderate difficulty and then the arid highlands very difficult dry desolate highlands with infertile soil sparse pine barrens and wasteland but rich in mineral deposits i think we're going to kind of go middle of the road i'm going to go for the alpine valleys because i think that's going to give us some really really pretty vistas northern mountain valleys thick with conifer forests and interspersed with lakes and occasional meadows medium environmental difficulty of course we're going to have a different name we're going to be going with the dapper dell there you go. And here's the map seed if you would like to play along. Now, you can also turn on pacifist mode. It is very worth noting that this does not only disable the raiders, the human raiders, but it will also disable aggressive animals like wolves and bears. Now, depending on the way you play, you might actually have them factor into your defensive strategies or, or maybe even just to supplement your food and leather so do be aware if you turn off raiders you are turning off wolves and bears as well but with that all said and done let's go ahead and jump into the game life can be harsh everywhere but in the old world there was no hope of it ever improving when our crops failed the ruling class would still collect the same share leaving our children to starve and if we had any coin to our name, the taxman would appear, demanding it for the crown. The nobles hid behind the safety of their walls and did nothing when raiders pillaged the outskirts of the city. And so, some of us decided that it was time to leave, that we'd rather take our chances in the wilderness, seeking the promise of a new land, than starve to death in our homeland. The journey wasn't easy. We lost many along the way. But this wild, unsettled land offers us the hope of a new start as the masters of our own destiny. Uh, 
and welcome to the humble beginnings of the Dapper Tell. All right, we finished scouting the surrounding area. Survey the land your villagers have explored, though they will very soon forget, and choose a promising site to construct your town center. It's important to choose a location that's near resources that you'll need to build a successful settlement. Things like clay, iron ore, and potential food sources. Right, okay, so at the start of the, ge the game, you, you've got uh, a, a bit of a calm before the storm moment where you can select where you place down your town center. Now, from what I've observed, what happens right now doesn't really persist after you've placed down the town center. So if you do have to find that your people get it mauled by a bear, don't think that you need to restart. I'm fairly certain that once you place the town center, they will all be alive and well once again. This timey-wimey, spacey racy shenanigans. Now I can see immediately we've got a uh, nice big uh, lake down there. We've got a fairly tall mountain, though I'm not seeing much uh, resources on the mountain. Uh, there's a little bit of iron over here, but actually not, uh, not much or in there, a little bit of gold over there as well, I suppose. Uh, we've got quite a lot of gatherables around here. This is basically our time to survey the map. Now, we've got vision on much more of the map than we will have when we place the town center. Our villagers will completely forget all of the effort that they put into uh, searching the surrounding area. So I recommend you kind of keep note of where things are, even if you don't intend to place the town center there, because this is kind of like advanced intel, but uh, it doesn't persist, uh, at least once you place the uh, the town center down. So you're, you're going to have to remember it yourself. We've got some sand, some clay. Both of those resources are uh, useful early on, but they're not strictly important. The main thing I would say is to focus on food for your town center and also try to avoid being too close to any predator dens. That'll just make your life much, much harder than it needs to be. So uh, the things to look out for, a place where you can fish. Sadly, there are no shoals of fish in here, but the lake itself will have fish. It's just shoals of fish uh, add to the efficacy of your fishing huts. Uh, we've got some nice area around here with lots of gatherables. Some of them are grayed out and that's because they're not in season right now. The seasons play a very big part in how you're going to be able to get your food and an even bigger part in the, uh, the farming, which is really, really detailed, I must say, especially for games like this. Uh, it's not a, uh, you know, slap a farm down and start harvesting resources. You really do have to put some food thought into that. On that note, you can press F to bring up the fertility display. So we've got a nice little area over here, maybe for some farmland, a little bit of an area over there. I don't think we would want to expand... Oh, well, there's not much fertility down here anyway, but we don't want to go too far in this direction for fear of running afoul of the wolf den, though, actually, that's a reasonable ways off. I don't think we need to worry about that one too much. Okay, so based on the fertile areas available to us and the uh, hunting, though, boars are not the best thing to hunt. Honestly, I would much rather some uh, some deer if we can spot them. Now oh, there's some deer over there. So yeah, I think this area somewhere around here is probably a good one. Uh, and then eventually we'll get down to getting some fish. Though perhaps if we set up our town center somewhere around here, maybe we'd start off with the fish and then just try to make our way down towards the hunting grounds. I would advise against putting your town center... Oh, there is a wolf right there. Um, okay, so... I'm really sorry about what's going to happen. You might think this cruel of me, but I promise you, there is method in my madness. Uh, whoever's about to be attacked by the predator, I, I really am sorry. It's already dead, though. Well done, everyone. I was fairly certain they would be okay with it. The thing is, at this stage, we just spawned everyone on top of that one wolf. It was, it was like just, you're wandering in the forest and a wasp's nest lands on your head. That wolf really didn't stand much of a chance, though I was expecting someone to get a little bit scratched up, but uh, thankfully that didn't happen, so hooray. Uh, that carcass can be gathered by a hunter, but we're probably not going to be doing that right now. Okay, so we've got a couple of things that have popped up straight away. Uh, housing shortage, firewood low. Uh, we do need to start gathering uh, food. ASAP, I would say. So let's have a look at that first. We're going to throw down some immediate uh, important buildings and then we'll take some time looking at the UI and, and over some more of the information once we, we've got a couple of things for our people to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop down a forager shack and you'll be fairly uh, familiar with the idea of like the, the work zone there but any work zone in this game that has a dotted line rather than a solid line can be moved around after placing the building so uh, don't worry too much about getting the, the 
absolute perfect location. But I think this would be a pretty nice one, right about there. Should be good. It's got a source of eggs, mushrooms, berries, and, and, and gatherables like nuts and stuff like that. And also herbs. All of those things super, super useful. Uh, this will take a little while to get set up. Oh, another predator site. I'm going to pause that there. But uh, this little area has now been cleared out, so our peeps should start putting uh, lumber down there and start building on it. But where is that predator? Huh. Okay. Now, this is uh, another nice thing about this game that uh, games of the sort don't always have. You can manually select people. So I'm just going to grab everyone. I'm going to tell them to, once again, just rush this lone wolf. Poor wolf. Uh, though this one is definitely going to get in a good couple of hits. Oh, my lord. Okay, well, that's the worst possible version of this. So, okay, we're playing on hard mode. Sadly, one of our villagers has been stricken with rabies. Much like the real world. is. Well, I mean, you know, in the real world you've got vaccines. But uh, we don't here. So that is quite literally a death sentence. Fare thee well, Elkrond. Uh, that was a bit of a rough start, but okay. Uh, that, that's uh, punishment for, for the hubris of starting on top of a wolf. They, they have taken, taken their revenge. There may even actually be a wolf den somewhere down around this lake, just outside of our initial uh, vision radius. But we'll continue with the plan, as, as uh, stated. We'll get a forager's hut up over there. This is already a fairly good place for them to forage, so I won't need to move that around. I feel really bad that we're already going to lose someone. Uh, oh, well, a little bit of drama, I suppose. Uh, let's see, where can we have this? I would like it somewhere around here. Now, that doesn't look like the best place to fish. Uh, but, again, it's a dotted line, so we'll be able to move that a little bit further down. So I'm going to set that one up as well. Now, one of the ideas in this game that I really, really like is the idea of the storage cart. We will have static storage buildings, but I love having a, a, a wagon for storage. We can just move that around. It's basically a mobile storage location. And so, if you put it somewhere where people are harvesting trees, and on that note, we're probably going to need some more trees harvested. So I'm going to set that up around here. I don't want to harvest uh, the bushes, though. I want to leave those there for us to continue to forage. Uh, but we will start chopping these trees down. Oh, okay, the, the gods are a little bit angry about the, the wolf uh, killing as well. I'm sorry! It was self-defense, I assure you. Uh, but we'll move the carts down here, and from there, our builders will be able to draw out materials right away. The uh, town center is already built though, so that is going to open up a couple of things. Most of the buildings in this game are locked behind requirements of other buildings, whether those buildings need to be a certain level or they need to have uh, certain other buildings unlocked. For example, a lot of things are going to be locked behind having a store yard opened up. For example, this, yeah, uh, sorry, a stockyard. This one actually needs a storehouse and a hunter's cabin, because obviously why would you be using a tannery if you don't have any source of leather? Now, I'm going to put most of my storage buildings fairly close to the town centre for one very important reason. The town centre is a garrisonable building, and once you've garrisoned anyone in there, they can shoot from it. Initial raids, both by the wildlife and by raiders, will tend to go for your storage locations. Bears will go for anywhere with food in, and that includes your houses, but raiders will tend to go for, for an actual store house or, or a stockyard. And so putting them around the, the uh, town centre gives you an early tower to deal with them, which will be very, very important. Now, time is ticking on. Uh, each one of these blocks represents a month, so this is like um, early or rather uh, late winter, going into early spring, summer, into autumn, and then into uh, uh, early winter and, and midwinter over there. We've currently got 12 villagers. That is going to be reduced to 11 sooner rather than later. Very sad about that. We've also got our health report. One person has got rabies. They are sick. There's really nothing we can do. They are actually dead. Their body just hasn't cottoned onto it yet. Uh, the age brackets over here, we've got adults and adolescents, but there are other brackets such as seniors and infants. The total village count is 12. Fit to work is 12. Yeah, that's going to change as well. Over here, we've got villager happiness. Uh, this actually has some 
extra information as well. So we've got uh, work rate, birth rate, immigration rate, combat effectiveness. I feel that should be a little bit lower, given what happened. And oh, of course, their actual happiness and the things that contribute to that happiness or that lack thereof. Our food stores, we've got... Oh, actually, now that that's all set up, let me... The first thing we're going to do is we're going to move this fishing area. Try and get the best bonus you can, fishing productivity. Looks like 140 is the best, so we'll just go ahead and pop that around there. There we go. That will be wonderful. And this also brings us over to uh, a little bit more information. This game is really, really good at, at feeding information to the player. Down here, this is something I wish more games would do. We have the basic needs. This is the state breakdown of the workforce of this building. How much time do they spend doing things? 24% of their time currently. Now, understand that this is very skewed because it's only just been built. So the measure of time that this is tracking statistics for is very, very short. But in that time, 24% of the time that uh, Razorfin over here, <laughs> I'll get to their names in a moment, has been uh, spent gathering, uh, tending to their basic needs, so gathering food, gathering water, that sort of thing. 67% of their time has been spent working. Well done them. 0% uh, of their time has been spent transferring goods because there have no, not been any goods to transfer yet. And they've spent 9% of their time idle. Uh, you'll get a readout of goods produced in the last year. Typically, the, the readouts in, in this regard will be for the, the year past or the period past, whether it's a couple of months or whatever. You won't get a, like an immediate real-time value. You'll, you'll have to go off the, the historic values. Uh, travel time there uh, is showing that, yeah, there's excessive travel time spent. But again, this building has only just been built, so this kind of information not very useful just yet. Give that a few months and then look in on that and uh, you'll get some pretty solid data on the way that you've set out your town. Uh, I'm keeping it paused just for the moment because there's a lot of stuff suddenly for us to to have a look at. And you know what, since I since I addressed the names, okay, so uh, we'll have a quick look at professions and I'll get to the names and then we'll unpause again. So we've got static professions. This operates as with most games in this genre. Once someone is a fisherman, they're a fisherman. If they're a brick maker, they're a brick maker. Laborer is the default profession. Builder is not a stra static profession though. With labourer, these two form a very dynamic relationship. I have designated, or rather the game is designated here, that there can be up to four builders at a time. I can change that as I want. If I've got a very large amount of labourers, I could increase this quite a lot if I had also a lot of work sites. And as long as there is work for a builder to do, so Right now, there are three builders, but it was four. Uh, we could have four. So there's only three builders worth of work to be done. So three people from the labor pool have become builders. As the work declines, then more will go back to being laborers. But if the work increases, then up to four people could be a builder at the same time. I'm just actually going to pop that up to five because I do like buildings being built nice and fast. But the other thing I would like to draw your attention to, from this window, you can actually uh, look at the individuals uh, in particular. You get a bit of information about their name, their age. That does matter. Unlike Banished, and this is one of the things I love the most, one of the differences between this game and Banished that I'm so happy for in this game, their age is directly connected to the passage of time. One year goes past, they get one year older. With one caveat, children do reach maturity a little bit faster, so they enter the workforce a little bit faster than you would otherwise imagine. But other than that, once, once, uh, once you actually have their, their information here, generally speaking, they age one for one with the years passing, which is really, really cool. They will die of old age, by the way, so you do need to worry about that, but it's not quite as going to catch you off guard that your, your population, that only like three years have passed, but half of your population have died of old age suddenly, and, and now you're in a death spiral. Uh, you can also see what they're equipped with, tools, clothing. I'm so sad that one of us have got rabies because these hide coats are generally very good for protecting against that, some food and uh, whatever they're carried. Now, we can name them, you'll be happy to note, but uh, let me go ahead. Candy Cadet there with the little tilde. One of the other features I quite like about this game, which really illustrates that uh, the devs know how this feature is going to be used and have tried to add in some interesting quality of life choices. Candy Cadet was named on a stream in a different game, an entirely different save. However, once you've named a character in this game once, their name is added to an internal name list that will just be drawn from from that point forward. Whether in that run or additional runs, that name can now show up. I find that very, very interesting. 
But give me just a moment, because there are going to be a couple of people in here who don't have their Jellicle names, so uh, I will be right back. And welcome back to Bicklow Horde. The tragic tale of a hero who has laid down their life for the colony. Uh, sad that your life had to be the, the price we paid to get rid of that wolf, but welcome. Uh, we've also got Razorfin Tribe. We've also got Peps the Horde, River Night Horde. You might be wondering where the, the hordes and the tribes are coming from. Cadet Tribe, double-barreled surname there. Uh, Rose Horde, another double-barreled surname. Uh, Eli FCT, Lego My... Is it Wevo? I'm not actually sure. Tribe, uh, Caligal Horde, Alacramps Horde. And uh, there we go. That's all of the peeps laid out. Now, again, you might be wondering, what's this with the hordes and the tribes? Well, since we've named the colony after the Dapper Dell, which is the name of uh, the Dapplings Discord server, I figured since we were going to end up with a mixture of uh, people who've been named in the stream game, so uh, my uh, Twitch subscribers and here, the, uh, the YouTube members and also patron supporters, I would uh, make them a little bit more distinct and uh, notable using the same uh, same names for the various groups on Discord. So we've got the Hedonistic Horde for patron supporters. We've got the Crimson Court, no court members yet in the colony for our YouTube members and the Twilight Tribe for the Twitch subscribers. Uh, this allows me, this isn't just, you know, a, a little bit of role play, but it is actually quite functional in that some names are very fitting and and thematic to the game. So this allows me to notice that it is actually a named name from, from one of my supporters rather than just a generated name and then I accidentally write over it. So that, that's where the, the tills came from. That's why we're giving them all surnames, just so that I, I'm not a dumb and I accidentally renamed someone who has been renamed. But we will more than likely see quite a lot of people showing up. Maybe we'll even see a River Knight Horde the second in here at some point. But thank you ever so much to all of you for your continued support. It means more than you know. Right, so with everyone named, time for us to get back to the very, very important task of preparing ourselves for winter. Now, we've got a bunch of stuff set up over here, and fortunately, Bicklow is not going to be long for this world. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to be able to uh, lay down a little bit more uh, foundations for the colony before they go. But on that note, we are actually going to need a graveyard sooner rather than later. It's something I would really have liked to not need uh, this early on, but uh, here we are. I'm going to place this on the way to the town centre, from where I imagine we're going to set up our houses. We'll see how all of that goes. Now, one of the really nice things about this game is you can actually relocate buildings fairly easily later on, so most of this is not set in stone. But I bring this up because you cannot relocate the graveyard, so bear that in mind. Where you put that, it stays, because you don't want to end up with poltergeists, and, and deciding to move graveyard and then forgetting some of the bodies, that's exactly how you end up with poltergeists. Uh, now, we're going to want a firewood starter. Now, since I'm going to be placing houses around this area, I want this to be relatively far away because it does have a malice to desirability. So we're going to pop that one right there. Now, the reason I popped that there is because I want it to be near enough to the area we set at the stockyard. Uh, that way, the logs that are placed there will easily be uh, moved across. Uh, on that note, let's move you up. Uh, we've got a couple of other things that we're going to need to do. Now we're starting to gather fish. I would really like to get some uh, hunting on the go at some point as well. I believe there was some deer down in that direction. But before we get to that, let's make sure that the fish that we are fishing don't go to waste by building a smokehouse. The smokehouse dries and cures meat and fish, greatly extending how long these foods will keep before spoiling. A constant supply of firewood is needed to keep the smokehouse operational. Well then, we may as well build it next to the firewood splitter seems to make sense to me. Let, oh, please stay away, lightning. Let's let's not have... Actually, you know what, on that note, let's go ahead and build a well as well. Oh, my lord. Really, a well as well. I do it every single time, and it hurts me every single time. Uh, I will place the well just behind the smokehouse and the firewood splitter, because that would be an awful building to, to catch a light. The building storing the firewood. That, that would be quite, quite tragic. But you know what? Let's uh, speed things up a little bit, get things on the move. Uh, villager has succumbed to illness. Well, that is quite sad. Rest in peace, 
Bicklow. Uh, however, one thing to note in this game, when someone dies, if they had a job, uh, did it say, it doesn't say it there. That's, oh no, a poor forager. There we go. You do need to manually reassign. Now you can do that from the building itself, or if you've got many buildings, it might be a little bit harder. So just bring up the professions and see that you need a forager in the pop. There we go. All sorted. Now hope, but really? Again? For real though? My lord. Okay, everyone get in there. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder if maybe we shouldn't have decided to put our our town center right on top of a uh, on on top of a uh, wolf. I think this may have actually caused some issues. Let's get everyone in there. Right, that's all right. Get in there. We need to out swarm them. Come on. No. Oh my lord, that was so close. How did you survive? A la cramps. Uh, it's a labor off the trap tree. That's how you survived muscles huge muscles well done My lord, I, I, I don't think uh, we we could bear the loss of another villager uh, Right now with that done uh, Let's go ahead. Well, actually what I was going to do is tell you to start storing things in here But actually, I'm not sure that we need to worry about that one just yet I'm gonna uh, allow you to continue gathering raw materials uh, were there any processed materials to be stored in here? Yes, firewood, wood planks, and bricks. I do not want those stored in in the cart. Uh, where are bricks? It doesn't appear that bricks can be stored in the cart anyway, so that's fine. But if I place this near any building that makes something, it's quite possible that this will be the closer storage destination. So, for example, when firewood is made, it might go into the cart instead of into the storage. So I, I want to be very explicit about that. This I want around purely to help me gather uh, items and uh, logs and the like. On that note, let's make sure that we get some more trees from around here. Let's uh, grab all of those, in fact, and stones as well. Are there any stones down here? Any stones at all? Actually, oh, there we are. Got some stones over there. Okay, that will help. We can speed things up again. Now, if we have a look at the food stores over here, it gives you a good idea of uh, all the different types of food. Yes, bring out your dead. Dead riddle just left to rot will attract them. I'm working on it. In fact, let's work on it. Ah, oh, there we are. Hooray! It is built. Let's get Hero Bicklow into the graveyard. The, we will christen the graveyard with Bicklow's corpse. I would rather not have to, but, you know, here we are. Uh, are, you, are you carrying Bicklow? Please tell me why. I, uh, I, I'm actually not sure where Bicklow passed away. I think it was in front of the, the uh, forager hat, actually. Let's have a look. There we go. A modest grave, grave there. Well done, Bicklow. Thank you very much for your, for your sacrifice for the colony. Okay, we've got the wood splitter up and running, though. Let's have a look at who's working the wood splitter. And that is Pepsa. Uh, who is working the forager now? That is River Knight, and our fisher is Razorfin. So we've got members of the tribe and members of the Horde in attendance. We have no court members. The, their clan is yet to be represented here in Dapperdell. Sad, because they're the ones with the uh, the eye abilities. But I'm happy to have so many Hordes in attendance. They're, they're very, very hard workers. Some might, in fact, say they are geniuses of hard work. Uh, I'm not sure what people say about the tribe. I try not to listen, actually. Uh, nevertheless, let's go ahead and get all this set up. We are getting the raw materials stocking up in there. That's fantastic. You also notice there are barrels. Barrels allow places to store items a little bit better. We do need more stone, though, and that's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, we are coming up to about mid, uh, middle of the year now, though, so it is time, I feel, for us to start laying down some houses, and we're going to need those built with something of a quickness, actually. Uh, we do not want to be uh, with people without homes through the winter. That would actually be incredibly bad. And like I said, we can move these houses later on, so let's just go ahead and plonk these down for now. That being said, I do recommend that you leave a little bit of gap here and there. If you are familiar with games like uh, like Rise of the Middle Kingdom or indeed Anno to certain degrees, having a little bit of extra room amongst your, your buildings will allow for you to uh, place down desirability enhancing uh, decorations like little gardens and plazas and the likes. And that will be very, very important later on when we want these buildings to upgrade. That being said, let's make sure that they're not auto-upgrading. 
because that is a very good way to drain all of your coffers of vital materials long before you have been able to spend them on the things that you actually need. The houses don't really care. If the materials to upgrade are there and they've met the requirements, they'll just go ahead and use them. So I like to be a little bit more explicit with that rather than just letting them do it themselves. Uh, next up, we are going to want another storage area. We've now got the root cellar available to us, and that is going to be very, very important. Uh, that being said, well, actually, no. We're going to pop the root cellar down there, and we're also going to build a storehouse. A large storage structure used to store all manner of items. Now, where can we pop that? I would quite like it to be uh, down here. You know what? I really like the way that those fences look. The fence was going around there. It almost looks like the, uh, the uh, wood splitter and the storehouse share kind of a, a yard in a way. I, I quite like that. Uh, that'll be awesome. But I have given pri priority on getting all of this done, so let's make sure that that happens sooner rather than later. We'll get some extra trees gone from there as well, and we'll speed things up. Hopefully, well, I think we should be able to get this done in time, but just in case, let's make sure that we've got a few more builders, if there's room for them. Well, let's not take all of our laborers away, otherwise things won't get moved around. Still, I want more people working on building those homes than not if we can make that happen. And while all that's going on, we're just going to remove these away. You just hold down shift and redesignate an area to undesignate it. And it's uh, fairly, fairly standard controls, really, that one. Is this being harvested? Yes, it is. Marvellous. Okay, we've got one house up and running. Each house can hold four people. And their upgrade requirements are wooden planks. We will get to building those shortly. Town centre, tier two. We are going to need a basic well within radius. Uh, the desirability has to be 30%. Two different types of food and herbs available to them. And the upgrade bonus will give a larger bonus, a happiness bonus from desirability around the house and increased durability, but not increased uh, storage space. Oh, well, rather occupancy space. Well, I suppose storage space as well, in, in a sense. I believe the store, the, how much they store is based largely on how many people live there. So uh, as the, the place expands to allow more people to live there, you tend to find that it can magically store more things, or at the very least it's willing to store more things. All right, let's move our, uh, our cart over here. We'll move it right in amongst them all. Hopefully that will help out. Our builders should be able to get all of this done. We are actually starting to run up against the clock. As long as we can get that made, then we're okay. Uh, there we are. We've got enough. Oh, really? Another? Bloody hell. Please don't die. My lord, we haven't even fully healed from the last attack. Right, okay, so someone is already in here. We've already started to store it uh, with various uh, meat, fish, mushrooms, vegetables, some herbs. That's marvellous. Absolutely marvellous. We do kind of want to get that made relatively soon, though, if we can. But we've definitely now got enough homes to uh, handle everyone through the, the winter. That's the main thing. We will want a well somewhere around here. Uh, we can possibly just tuck that in over there. Well, maybe give it a little bit of a little bit of room. Oh, a new villager has immigrated. Let's have a quick gander who they are. Let's find out your Jellical name. Please, everyone, welcome Obro to the Horde. I mean, to Dap it down. And more people wish to join your settlement. More people await to join your settlement. Amass four months' supply of food and six houses. <laughs> I mean, we're on the houses, but, well, I guess technically we've also got the four months of food, but I really wouldn't want to accept you just yet. I've got to be honest. We're about to hit winter, and I don't really have that much spare. So hopefully this doesn't trigger them all trying to join, because I would hate to turn them away in the middle of winter. That is not a dapper thing to do. Not even slightly. Uh, we have got the storage building coming along. All right, let's 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 get the, the cart back down here because I'm going to want to offload a number of things. As soon as these buildings are complete, I'm going to want to offload the, uh, the uh, correct items into them. So all the food into the root cellar and the miscellaneous like weapons into the storage house. Uh, not only is that just going to free up more room on the cart, though I'm not actually sure how... M oh, yeah, it's got a modest... Uh, modest amount of room in there, so I, I mostly want building materials in here. But should this ever get attacked, 
I don't want it to be looted of weapons. That seems like a terrible thing, you know, the bandits arming themselves with our own weapons after killing our oxes and burning the cart. That would just be insult to injury, frankly. Uh, they will go for the cart, it is a storage building, so uh, we might not want to uh, be just leaving it as such a, a juicy target, because I'm most likely going to be taking... Oh, my lord, there they are. I'm most likely going to be taking it outside of our... Uh, of the uh, the walls, once we have walls to put it outside of, be simply because I'm going to be gathering and building at distant locations. But I'm not going to turn six people away in the middle of winter. You made your way here, and here you will stay. Now I need to name you. Everyone, please say hello to our latest members of the colony. Lost Dryer Socks Horde. Mousy Karina Horde. Lady Wolfheart Horde. Very fitting, given the, the amount of wolves that we see around these parts of Lady Wolfheart. Zero Fave. Uh, Faint's tribe, Union ID, and Sir Pew Pew, also members of the tribe. So, three tribe members and uh, three horde members. Uh, starting to see uh, the, the clans filling out. It's going to be very interesting to see what the, the uh, attendance becomes over time. Now, there we go. We've finally got our storage area set up, which means I can now tell you to not store anything that can be stored in there. Uh, that being said, I will allow you to store any raw materials. Generally speaking, I would prefer these to be stored. That said, um, I, well, I could at this point tell you to offload all the food. I guess I will, uh, simply because I would rather those be in the storage house rather than here and wandering around with me. Again, same, same thing. We shouldn't really have uh, food being stored in the cart. There's not really a reason why that would ever occur. Can I just tell the whole thing to be emptied? Oh my lord, I can't. Okay, well that's definitely something I would like to be added as a quality of life enhancement. Give me a moment. And there we go. We've also got the root cellar up and running and I've gone ahead and I've disallowed any type of food stuff to be stored in the storehouse. Some things are still going to be in there just because they were already uh, designated as the destination prior to the root cellar finishing, but uh, eventually someone will come along and move things into the correct place. Currently we've got two months worth of food and in 12 months one month's worth of food is going to decay, unfortunately. We're about to finish building a well over here, which is going to be very great news for the houses, since they're probably going to be uh, rather desperate to have that well there at this point. Uh, furthermore, let's go ahead and build out a road. Now, a road will have a tiny, tiny effect on desirability. Uh, it won't have a, a significant one. I, I believe it'll only really come into play once the road is upgraded to, for example, a stone road. But still having it there at all would be nice. Now, I would love to have that road curved down. Uh, it's not a very good curve, though, is it? Let's be honest. No, I think we can do better than that. Can we select that road? We need to find one of the building sites and then delete it. There we are, deleted. And uh, we'll continue the road down from up here, down to the uh, little area by the fishing hut. And hopefully we can have something more interesting up here. Maybe if I just brought it up and then curved. Mm, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to get a really nice curve there, sadly. That'll have to do. I mean, it's not as bad as it could be, I suppose. It's a little bit uh, characterful, but otherwise we've just got one long road going straight through the town, which I actually kind of like in terms of uh, kind of the theme of it. Now, if I recall correctly, there are going to be some deer over here, so I'm going to drop down a couple of explore flags to get any unoccupied settlers out there to have a quick gander, see what there is to see. Uh, furthermore, I would like to move these uh, berry bushes up closer to the uh, the forager. Make their job a wee bit easier on them. That being said, we can also find any others as well. And whilst I would recommend doing this is one of the first things you do, because it does tie up a settler to walk out there to uh, put in a, a couple of uh, man hours worth of work to dig up the berry bush and then move it. But it is definitely worth doing once you've got a little bit more established and you're not having to uh, worry about the, the bare necessities for survival. Right, there we go. We've managed to clear out quite a lot of the logs, actually. I'm, I'm relatively pleased with the look of that right now. 
Now, let's have a quick gander in here. We have moved the fish out. Fantastic. Oh, food stocks are low. That's fine. They're going to be uh, low here and there for a little while. Uh, let's have a look at who's working where. I don't believe we've got any workers in the stockyards right now, though. Uh, in the smokehouse, though, Lady Wolfheart is enjoying the, uh, the very characterful aromas of smoked meat. Uh, though, from what I'm told, smokehouse is mostly just smell of smoke, uh, sadly. Which is probably why that they are not the desirability-increasing affairs that I would have imagined otherwise. But down here, I'm thinking we want another, co uh, well, a combination hunter and uh, forager. We've got a lot of herbs, mushroom clusters, hawthorns. Yeah, let's go ahead and set up a little bit more uh, in regards to food production, just to tie this over. Uh, if we were to set up about here, we would get a couple more items here and there. Uh, and I think that will work out quite nicely. Though, if we could get some greens, it would probably be a little bit better for us on the whole. We definitely do need some some uh, a good balance of greens in our diet. So, let's go ahead and pop this about there, I'm just going to say. Now, I don't really like building buildings so close to where I'm going to be hunting. For obvious reasons, but... We'll hope that this works out in our favor. Now, can I get this to twist and turn and come up here and connect up? It might be a little bit too much of a too much of a, a walk there, but let's see. Uh, come down here, perhaps. Maybe down there would be okay. We'd go straight over the, the clay, though, which is not ideal. What I would love is to have a bit of a twisty-turny road that connects up down here. Oh, that, that actually looks... Very nice. There we go. That leads straight down to the storage areas, so we'll be able to take the forage and, indeed, later on, the spoils of our hunter down to the correct places to store them. Uh, let's pop those about there. Now, with any distant location like this, I think it's generally worthwhile popping down another well. Again, you don't want to see what happens if your remote hunters and forager cabins, mostly made of wood, get struck by lightning. And the nearest well is the other side of the map. Bad times. Trust me on this. We have lost a couple of berries, though. We're not going to be able to keep them for over long, no matter what we do. Uh, in terms of our housing situation, we're doing all right there, I would say. But we could probably do a little bit better. So let's add a couple of extra houses. Maybe one there. And one here. And then... Uh, sure, we'll, we'll have another one directly opposite. There's, there's no reason to go too far out, because if, if you make too much of a point of trying to make it look organic, like you hadn't laid them down on a grid, you just draw attention to the fact that the grid exists. So lay them out, uh, you know, whatever whatever way the terrain dictates is, is probably the, the most organic way you're going to get, uh, in my opinion, at the very least. We'll draw out a road just down here as well. Now, eventually, we're going to want to get a market up and running. Can we do that yet? No. We're going to need the saw pit because the market requires wooden planks. So that makes a lot of sense. Let's go ahead and place down a saw pit then. This one is going to have a fairly intense effect on desirability. So let's not build it quite as close as that. In fact, we can maybe squidge this one. Oh, you know what? Yeah, sure. We'll squidge it right down here. That should be okay. It's far enough away, I think. That it shouldn't cause too much of an issue for our town centre. And we can draw out a little road down here as well. Now, some roads are necessary. Uh, and the reason for that is that without the roads, you're not going to be able to build uh, eventually wagon and car. Uh, sorry, uh, wagons. Uh, I believe the, the wagons are pulled around by, by oxen. And they act much like dedicated uh, transporters. But I believe they can only follow the roads, or at the very least, the effect, the speed up effect of roads is dramatic with them versus versus people. You can also flatten if you would like to. I noticed that the uh, the slope there became a little bit aggressive. It does take uh, effort to do. You don't get it for free, so I would be sparing with your use of it. But it can help out in some instances. We'll actually watch how this looks once they're done with it. Quite a few of them in there. You don't always get to uh, dictate how it's going to go. It, it, it's more like it averages it out rather than strictly uh, strictly uh, flattens it down to the, the tile that you began on. 
But I think that leads to some very interesting looking slopes as well, which I, I quite like. All right, who have we got working in here? We've got Xenophanes and Obro. I actually feel that we need more people working on planks than anything else, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get uh, Phoenix Tilia and Alacramps. Xenophanes is the solitary tribe uh, clan member working in the sawpit. Hopefully, hopefully they they are going to be an exemplar of their clan. They they will bridge the gap. It'll be it'll be glorious. We have, however, run out of food, which is not the best thing in the universe. Our hunter and our fisherman will work over uh, right, all the way through winter though as long as it isn't so cold they can't go out let's have a look at you. you're butchering meat right now sir pew pew and also lost dryer socks over here okay no that's that's perfect now you will notice that uh, again some buildings will have a tendency to uh, stock their own uh, like survival goods so the people working there don't really need to go back to their homes as frequently. They do still have homes, though. This is not their home. If we click on Lost Dry Socks, for example, we can see that this is their home. It's just that they're not going to make that trip if they don't need to. They will occasionally, but certainly when, when the weather is particularly dangerous, they will prefer to stay somewhere else. We can build temporary lodgings eventually, uh, temporary shelters, which effectively give this uh, effect. So the, the hunters' lodges, they, they tend to accommodate the, the hunters and, and the gatherers because they are often going to be built quite far away from the city. But, for example, a, uh, a, a labour camp for um, cutting down trees might not have that functionality. So you are going to want to use temporary shelters. But my general rule of thumb is it never hurts to have more temporary shelters, even if a couple of buildings uh, already do that job. It's not going to hurt to have some, uh, some redundancy there. I am going to move this hunting area to include the boar though here we go year three we've made it through two winters sadly we, we haven't done so without anyone dying still uh, it was it was a noble sacrifice and, and will be remembered we we will will no doubt tell stories of how when the founders first came to these lands they were beset by the environment the the wolves uh, they they rallied to defend their territory and Bicklow gave their life heroically to ensure that uh, the first founders were able to, to get a solid foothold. And from there, a, a vibrant town sprung up. We'll, we'll erect statues, there will, there will be a festival day. It's going to be beautiful, Bicklow. And we'll no, almost certainly end up with someone taking the name. It'll be, a, be an honoured name in, in the colony's history. No doubt we will, we will see Bicklow's, little Bicklow's running around eventually. Uh, however, the last couple of things we're going to do, we're going to pop down another house or two, I think, probably wise. Uh, we'll pop that one there, and maybe have another just facing up around there. We'll leave this space for something else in time. Uh, we'll just run a road up and around. There we go. Again, you don't need to be too fastidious with where the roads are going, but, you know, you can, you can create a nice effect if you're inclined to do so. Where was that well? The well is right there. And let's not go straight through it. Let's go around and line that up. There we go. I have some curved roads here and there. That's quite a lot of space there for some uh, for some desirability structures. And I think this is a relatively good place to, to wrap things up. We've actually done a fairly good bit of work. We've managed to get a, a solid foothold. Again, thanks to Bicklow's sacrifice, we've got uh, I would imagine we're going to have a decent amount of food coming in. I'm very happy to have a hunter up and running because fish, I mean, that's good. It's great. It's protein, but it isn't hides. And hides are shoes and hide coats, which will hopefully protect future colonists from rabies. But uh, we'll have to keep our fingers crossed on that one. But I think this is, a, this is a really, really solid, solid beginning to the colony. So I hope you have enjoyed. That is going to be it for us for now. In the next episode, we will hopefully be setting up a market square and continuing to progress through the tech tree, getting up a couple of other industries. The aforementioned cobbler and uh, tannery uh, amongst them. But all of that we'll have to wait for a future episode. Once again, thank you ever so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, then do consider leaving a like if you liked down below and sub if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. But until then, do take care, everyone.